The iPhone 6s was originally released in late 2015, and while it looked the same as its predecessor, it actually brought a lot to the table in terms of the camera, performance, and durability. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and with the release of iOS 12, I felt like this was a good time to revisit the iPhone 6s. Is it still worth buying in late 2018? It might seem a little redundant to do another review of the success this year, but I think it's worth it. iOS 12 has changed this device for the better, and I wanted to go into that a little bit. Plus, the iPhone success was unfortunately just discontinued by Apple, along with the SE, due to the launch of the iPhone XS and XR. It's actually a bit sad, especially considering Apple now officially sells no iPhones with headphone jacks, but luckily the iPhone success is still a great phone and one that I can really appreciate. I actually personally owned and used it for quite some time last year before I got the 10 and really enjoyed the experience. But now iOS 12 is out and the 6s feels like a completely different phone. And that's a good thing. It's faster, as iOS 12 has worked on pushing performance forward on the older devices, and it's really hard to believe that this phone is three years old in all honesty. It flies for the most part, and it's amazing how well it's actually managed to hold up. The iPhone 6s looks nearly identical to the iPhone 6, but don't be fooled, as it's different in nearly every single way, at least where it can. Perhaps the most obvious difference when you hold it is how much higher quality the build is. Apple used a higher grade aluminum to avoid the whole bend gate issue again, and you can tell with this phone being a bit heavier and thicker. Plus, it's pretty darn durable. The thickness and heaviness over the 6 really isn't that noticeable, and this is still one of the thinnest and lightest phones Apple's ever made, especially if you compare it to something like the stainless steel iPhone XS. On the front of the phone, we have second generation Touch ID. It's still a physical button, but is way faster than what was on the iPhone 6. It's extremely convenient and reminds me of how good Touch ID really is. Something new added here was 3D Touch, a feature a lot of us have become pretty accustomed to. It may still be a bit underutilized even in iOS 12, but it's very neat and nice to have, although not a requirement for an iPhone by any means. You can totally live without it. It is, of course, however, nice to see it here on the success, and you'll appreciate it if you buy it. The display comes in at two size options, being 4.7 inches with the success and 5.5 inches with the 6s plus which you should get really depends on what size you're more comfortable with although you will be getting a better battery on the plus as well as optical image stabilization on the camera the displays on both models look pretty good being retina and have no visible pixels obviously there are much higher quality displays out there at this price bracket but i'd say for nearly anybody it looks great and you won't have any complaints the battery life is something pretty important to most people and it's very good on the 6s plus but only okay on the smaller 6s it should get you through the day, but keep in mind that if the phone has been heavily used throughout its life, which is very possible, the battery may be significantly degraded from its original capacity. This can result in a loss of performance in both battery, life, and speed, so what I'd recommend is getting a replacement from Apple, who are only charging $30 right now. That's a killer deal considering that you're getting a brand new genuine battery that'll be replaced by them, so you don't have to do it yourself. Just make sure you do it soon, as Apple's going to be raising the price to $60 after December 31st of this year. The camera is something that was really improved upon with the iPhone 6s, and you can definitely tell by its photos. The rear sensor has 12 megapixels, the same number as the iPhone XS, and it can film in 4K at 30 frames per second. Now obviously this isn't a competition, the XS is going to take way better photos than the 6s, but the 6s is still a huge jump over the 6 and can take some amazing shots. It's actually pretty crazy how far we've gotten to a point that a 3 year old phone still takes really good photos and video, but here we are. The selfie camera is nothing to write home about at only 5 megapixels, but it's still good enough for most, and when it comes to Snapchat or whatever, you aren't going to have any complaints. And now I'll show some quick photo examples for you to see for yourself. This right now is being filmed on the iPhone 6s in 4K at 30 frames per second. And it looks pretty decent, definitely good enough for almost anybody.
where the iPhone 6s especially one-ups the iPhone 6 is in performance. The 6s comes equipped with the A9 processor and 2GB of RAM, making it speedy even today and starting the trend of Apple pulling ahead of Android phones when it comes to pure raw power. It can handle nearly any task you throw at it without breaking a sweat, and when it comes to gaming, social media, streaming, or whatever, you're really not going to have any issues. The 6s is a powerhouse and holds up extremely well in late 2018, especially now on iOS 12 with things feeling even faster. The 6s provides a stunningly smooth and fluid experience considering it's 3 years old, and you really probably are not going to have any complaints in using it. So is it worth buying? It's a great phone, as we've established, but how much does it even cost? As mentioned before, Apple has stopped selling them on their website now, but if you really want it new, you should be able to find it through carriers that still have them in stock. I would, however, normally recommend buying them used on eBay or Craigslist, as that's where most deals seem to be. On eBay.com, I usually see successes hovering for around $200 for a 32 gigabyte model, which is, by the way, the smallest storage capacity you want. 16 gigs is just too small for most people, and if you're going to be downloading nearly anything or taking photos, you're definitely going to want at least 32 gigs. I think generally, I'd recommend the smaller success as it's a better value, and if you want a plus size phone, maybe consider going to the 7 or the 8 plus, as they have a lot more benefits over their smaller counterparts, with with their secondary camera lenses. At the end of the day, of course, it's up to you, but I do think the smaller 6S is the best deal. And that's another thing, look for a deal, don't settle. I've seen them for under 200 bucks, you can find them too. If you're on a budget, this is the best of bang for your buck iPhone you can find, except for, I guess, the iPhone SE. If you can give up the larger display, the iPhone SE is even cheaper at around $150, and with nearly all the same specs. Overall, the iPhone 6S is a great phone, even three years later, and it remains to be one of my go-to recommendations for those looking to pick up an iPhone. It's a great choice and should remain supported by Apple for at least another two to three years. And with that, I think I'm pretty much done here. I've always loved the iPhone 6S. I only owned it for about six months, but I enjoyed my time with it and it really didn't give me any troubles. If you enjoyed this video, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you so desire, links below. And with that all being said, I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I will see you all next time.